Nashville's housing market just took a significant shift towards the buyers. In fact, this is the most significant shift I've seen in a couple months. And I'm going to show you how it has changed my outlook over the next several weeks and some practical implications, what you should be able to get if you are making offers on a house. And then I'm gonna show you one county in particular is very significant in the change that is happening. Maybe you all can help me understand why it's impacting there more than other places. But first, let's just take a look. Let's just orient ourselves. Here's a tweet from Lance Lambert. You can see Tampa, Florida is down 6.5%. Austin down 5.8%. Now, the thing about Austin it's not just down 5.8%. It was down almost 5% the year before, which means you're stacking these drops on top of each other. It's really probably one of the most shocking shifts. In fact, to me, Austin and San Antonio of this list, you know, because they've had back-to-back year-over-year drops. Now, when you look at Nashville, it's interesting to me just how much Nashville, from being a boom town, has outperformed even though we have some significant headwinds and we're overvalued from a lot of historical measurements. Just look at what a house will rent for versus what you can buy it for and pay a mortgage and you can see there's a disconnect in this market. A lot of people have been calling it out. You know, this is one of the reasons we've kind of honed in on neighborhoods is because some of these metrics, you know, I don't know of a neighborhood that's dropped minus 0.2%. I can point out to neighborhoods that have dropped 20 and 30%. I can point out neighborhoods that are actually increasing in value. I don't know the neighborhood that's getting minus 0.2%. Maybe you all do. You can tell me, what are you seeing in your neighborhood? Why am I saying that we are shifting so much more towards buyers? Well, guess what just changed? It just flipped. Active listings now at 93.15. I am now forecasting for us to make a new year-to-date high in active listings. I did not think that would happen just two weeks ago. But look at this. Our year-to-date high was 93.55 in active listings. We're now at 93.15. And I would fully expect in the next week for this to break through that 93.55 number. Definitely a shift from the um, counter-seasonal trend we saw in August where things started backing off. Starting to see that go the other way. Let's look at contract volume, which by the way, I am going to show you one county on here that has shifted very significantly. We're going to look at it because I think it really matters to what's happening in the narrative, in the story here. But let's go back and look at contract volume. Contract volume is down 3.7%. We are now well below where we were last year. Well below where we were last year. Now keep in mind, Mortgage rates, even though they have dropped, they are still year-over-year year higher. If year-over-year year mortgage rates are higher, demand is going to drop. And if year-over-year year mortgage rates are lower, demand is going to pop. And that's why you saw last year we had a massive pop in the demand. But this year, we did not have that. To me, this seems a little bit bearish. This is bearish. Not, you know... My mood, you know I can't forecast prices. I'm not going to try to forecast prices. But when demand shifts negative, I get more bearish. When demand shifts positive, I get more I get more bullish. You know, here we are. Demand is dropping. So take it for what it's worth. We are now negative year over year. Now, one surprising thing about this too. If you go to Mortgage News Daily, look at where mortgage rates were in September of 23. They were 7.3% and they were moving to 8% two years ago. And now we're at 6.3%. So we're a full percentage point lower than where we were two years ago. Why does that matter? I mean, our contract volume two years ago was 2222. We're at 2269. One full percentage point drop. And we have just a smidge more demand than we had two years ago. That is... That is surprisingly bearish. Okay, let's keep going. Median price. Median price is still higher than it was last year and the year before. And price cuts as a percentage of active listings have now jumped up 40.1%. We peaked this year at 40.4%. I expect this to also take a, another high. 40.1%. 
The fall is getting pretty soft. I'm gonna show you one of the counties that I think it's coming from. By the way, contract price has bounced, but still it's not a super strong bounce. Now, what county, what county could I be talking about when I say that things are looking very soft? Well, let's take a look at Davidson County first because we know that's where the most of the volume is. And in Davidson County, Contract volume has been very stable, just slightly above where it was two years ago. Again, I think that's very surprising. Now, Davidson County did have a pretty significant property tax increase, and I think that might have actually pushed prices down. Median price per foot, basically flat. Median contract price per foot, basically flat. Okay, let's go on. Williamson contract volume is dropping, but still well above where it was last year. Last year at this time, we were just above 300. This year, we are at almost 350, 342. So contract volume is still very strong, double digit increase in Williams County, even though it drops. Active listings much lower than they were in June. It just went negative. Let's look at price per foot, which I think is probably more indicative of the market, still above where it was last year, but you see we had a pop in Q4. Okay, so what county has gotten extraordinarily bearish in my opinion? It is Rutherford. This is where Murfreesboro is. And why if I said it's getting bearish when it has a 3.8 month supply, when Davidson has a 4.7? Well, look at what's going on with contract volume. Contract volume just got very negative. We're well below where we were in 23. Remember 2023, we were in mid sevens for mortgage rate. And we are well below that contract volume in Rutherford County. If you know what's going on in Murfreesboro, if you know what's going on in Rutherford County, I would love to hear your comments because, wow, look at that. Very negative. Look at the active listings. We're now 1355 breaking through, uh, clearly headed up above where we peaked in July. And look, 1355 versus last year, we were at 1,000. We were talking about a 30 a 35% increase in active listings. Rutherford County clearly is shifting negative. It is carrying Greater Nashville down. So let's just take a look at the neighborhood tracker and see if we can see a neighborhood in Rutherford County, see if we can see what's going on. And you all, again, tell me what you're seeing. But look at this shift. You can see the blue. Remember, blue is shifting towards a buyer's market. Red is shifting towards a seller's market. Even if it comes from very low, it could still be a very big buyer's market. This is just about year over year shift. It's not about whether or not it's a buyer's market or seller's market, but you can see, look along Laverne, Smyrna, Murfreesboro. This is, this is a lot of where the distribution of Nashville, a lot of the industrial hangs out. It's where the Nissan plant is, uh, Bridgestone. We talked about some of the layoffs earlier this year. Quite a shift in this area. If you know what's going on, Tell me what you're seeing. Let's look at a, let's see if we can find one that's decently volumed here. Okay, so there's in this area, Key Estates, there's 123 that close every year. Okay, we had 49 this year, we had 21 last year. We actually have more under contract than we did last year, but the increase in active listings probably make it feel like it's so much slower, even though there's actually more under contract. And look at the discounts. Price cuts have gone up, so we're starting to see more motivation. We're starting to see more active listings, even though demand is actually higher in this area than it was last year when we look at contracts. I think that's fascinating. We can see it here. You can see it's it's really hard to see with all the scatter plots, but when you look at the clumps, you can see the clumps are starting to drop a little bit. By the way, this price per foot. When you look at the active listings and you just take them off, where are the ones under contract? Where are they headed? Looks to me like it's pretty flat, but if they're giving concessions, you could see how it would shift down. Last thing I want to mention, how much are people actually getting a discount? In the past month, 2,400 have closed in, in the middle Tennessee, greater Nashville area, that, that map that I just showed you here. In this, in this map right here, 2,400 have closed. Okay, only 1,225 had a discount to the list price. That means only 51% got a sales price lower than the list. Now look, this market is softer than these metrics. I'm a little bit surprised, maybe even disappointed by this. And you all know I've been probably much more bullish than even most agents out there because I just, I saw contract volume higher than it was, but only 1,225 got an actual discount to list that's pretty surprising. Now, of that 1,225, if you did get a discount, 
the median discount was 3.1% to list. So look, if you are planning to buy, and, and I'm not saying that every house you can do this on, but if you are asking for a discount, chances are you're not competing. There's no other offers on the table. You should be asking for a discount. And the median discount that people are getting when they ask for a discount is 3.1% from list. Now look, I know there's other concessions out there and some of you, you know, try to take the other concessions, but I am surprised even if something's well priced, you can't get a little bit off list price. We had somebody offer this week, it was in a strong neighborhood, the comps were strong. We still asked for a discount and granted because the comps were strong, the sellers didn't give us a ton, but they still gave us something and it was it was decent. My buyers were very happy with it, but if you don't ask, you won't get it. So um, if you're the only buyer talking to that seller, you should be asking for a discount. There's absolutely no reason you can't ask for concessions in a market like this. So make sure you have a savvy agent out there, one that's looking at the data, one that can ask for things for you. That's what, they're, that's what a buyer agent does. They have a fiduciary responsibility to represent you. And one of the ways they can do that is ask for a little bit more on the price. So with that, I hope you all have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.